It's 1973 and a film has just come out called Soylent Green. It has one of the most famous plot twists in history, so I won't spoil it for you. But its main premise is based around a futuristic America overrun by rampant overpopulation with more people than food and society in freefall. In the early 1960s, global population growth hit its fastest point in all of recorded human history. This film is a good example of some of the apocalyptic visions that people had at the time for what the future of the world would look like. The thinking went along the lines of more people meant more kids, which meant more people, which meant more kids, which meant more people, which meant more... While the global population is still something that is of concern, much of the hysteria about explosive exponential growth has gone away, instead to be replaced by a concern that one day soon we might actually be running out of people. You might wonder, why is this a concern when the world's population is still growing? Well, it all comes back to one of my favourite graphs, Look at this graph. known as the demographic transition model. And yes, I do have a favourite graph, and yes, I do also have a girlfriend. Right, honey? Not all countries are the same when it comes to changing population, and so the graph divides the world into five main categories. So first off, we have category one. For most of human history, life was pretty dire. Bring out your dead husband. He says he's not dead. Well, he will be soon, he's very ill. It was a common expectation, even amongst the wealthy, the surviving childhood to become an adult was at best uncertain, and the general population had a very high death rate. Because of this, there was a societal expectation that women would have lots of children to make up for the ones that wouldn't survive until adulthood. This is known as the pre-industrial stage. Unfortunately, there aren't any countries left in the world that are still considered to be here, apart from perhaps a few uncontacted tribes. And then, at the start of the 19th century, things started to shift. Scientists usher in a new medical age with the monumental reports that proved the salt vaccine against crippling polio to be a sensational success. With the advent of antibiotics, vaccines, and crazy ideas like washing your hands. In some parts of the world, the death rate started to fall. But as this happened, the societal expectation that women would continue to have lots of children remained. This created an imbalance between the number of people dying and the number of people being born, leading to rapid population growth. As the population gets used to these changes, gradually the birth rate starts to adjust to match the new lower death rate. At this point, the population is still growing, but now at a decreasing rate. Once the birth rate has matched the death rate, we now have reached stage four, at this point, the population of a country is in equilibrium. In theory, the whole world could remain forever in this stage and maintain a stable population, but that isn't what's happening. When it was first conceived in 1930, there were only four stages, but in recent years, geographers have added a fifth stage. This is to account for the phenomenon in many Western countries of birth rate falling below the required replacement rate of 2.1 children on average per woman. So first of all, why is this happening? Well, there are many reasons, but for one, babies are f***ing annoying. Having a baby is like living with a malfunctioning prototype fire alarm with a money shredder on one end and a liquid shit dispenser on the other. Other reasons include women's education, birth control, housing prices, and decreasing religiosity. So what does this mean for the future? Well, at the moment, the world's population is still growing because the excess births, this bit of the graph, vastly outweighs this bit of the graph. But don't be fooled. If you just focus on the total global population, then you are likely to miss the massive demographic shift that is coming our way. The fact is that as a globe, we are now shifting towards the stage of lower than replacement births. Even India, the world's most populous country, is now below replacement rate, with the number of young people entering the workforce having peaked in 2019. In fact, in the next 25 years, almost all of the population growth on Earth is going to be coming from only eight countries. Pakistan, the Philippines, India, Egypt, Ethiopia, Tanzania, the DRC, and Nigeria. 
Nigeria alone is projected by 2100 to have more people than China. Based on the current UN projections, world population is projected to peak at about 10.4 billion in the 2080s, remain level until 2100, after which it will begin to decrease. So what's the harm of all of this? Well, personally, I think that in some regards, a lower global population might be a good thing. It's no secret that we're not doing the best job of looking after the planet at the moment. If everyone consumed as many resources as the average American, we would need about 5.1 Earths to sustain us. Less people means more resources to go around and hopefully a better quality of life for everyone at a lower environmental cost. But the level of population is only half the equation. For a well-running society, it's not so much the total population that matters, but rather the shape of the population pyramid, this being the numbers of individuals in each age group divided between men and women. If people rapidly stop having children, then this leads to an increase in the number of dependents in society. If a population has too many dependents, then this shifts a disproportionate tax burden to the working age population below. For instance, here's the population pyramid for Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I wanna take you, Bermuda, Bahamas, come on pretty mama. So for a reduction in global population to be beneficial, it has to happen at a rate that doesn't skew the pyramid too much. It's what I want for the world is for everybody to be able to live a decent life with opportunities in a way that doesn't harm our planet for future generations. Our goal as a species needs to be to get everybody into this bit of the graph before we kill the planet in the process. Because only once people are lifted out of poverty will they have the capacity to care about the environment. The threats posed by climate change and shifting demographics are undoubtedly significant. But I'd just like to end on a piece of positive speculation. The current state of scientific advancement and human ingenuity does give me some hope for the future. When you look at the current growth in technology, it's likely that within the next 50 years, we'll have a general AI capable of operating on the same level as a human. I mean, look at this stuff. Are you telling me that by the time I'm 80, that thing wouldn't be capable of filling many of the gaps that a changing demographic leaves in the workforce? allowing us all to live better lives. We just have to make sure that 99% of the profits don't end up in this douchebag's pocket. Just some of my thoughts. So what about you? I'd love to hear what you think the future of mankind will look like in the comments. And thanks for watching.